and hello everybody and welcome to the newest indoor adventure in the Four Keeps Advent Part 6. For all of you listening in and viewing us right now, today is September 23rd, 2019 and you are loved. We do this stream every week at Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So consider joining us on any of those dates and you will hear the same message because I feel like it is a very important thing to remember. Other important things to remember. All of you people joining us uh, live have probably noticed, but... Uh, our dear friend LB Hackamup is not with us in the layout. She is running a little bit late, so she will be joining us later. And I am a wee bit of a liar pants, because initially we were going to be having Greybeard on for this stream, but after speaking with Greybeard about uh, the context of what character we were wanting to have him play, we decided that it would be good to uh, kind of wait uh, on his character to finally show up. So... Uh, he will be showing up at some point because we love him very, very much. Uh, other than that, we have all sorts of ways that you guys can help join in on the show. If you this is your first time joining in, we have video casts. Our old VODs go up at youtube.com slash indoor adventures. You can find our audio casts at anywhere that you can find audio casts, also under the same name of Indoor Adventures. And if you already support us everywhere of those places, consider joining us on Patreon at patreon.com slash indoor adventures, where you can gain access to our after show called Nights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from each other, but also from the community at large. We are also only 10 followers away on Twitch from hitting 400 which is insane to me, but we are getting there. I would like to see that possibly before the end of the year, and based off of your guys' incredible receptions to all of our series, I think that that is a reasonable goal. And when it happens, I don't know what we'll do. Probably a giveaway. I got some stuff. I got a monster manual. I got a Volo's guide. I got things to, to hand out. Uh, so that is going to be great. Other ways that you can support the show. For now... We have uh, bit.ly slash adventure merch, which takes you to our Streamlabs merch store. Uh, that is going to be up until the end of the month, and then we are going to be fully transferring over to Teespring. Uh, there is no official URL yet for our Teespring site, such as our current adventure merch. I'll probably just end up changing the bit.ly. Uh, but if you are interested, you can find the link in our Discord, which is linked below. So... With all of that, that is it for my spiel. So, RJ, who are you playing tonight? Hey, everybody. I'm RJ here on the channel, but I'm playing tonight Calum, the Shatterclive Wizard Cleric. Yes. And Wings, who are you playing? I'm Wings. I'm going to be playing Coriander, the Elegant Paladin. Hey! I'm Cyber. I play Arjan, the Dragonborn, Blood Hunter, and Tiamat Sports Cleric. And our dear friend LB Hackmup plays Gwen, the halfling barbarian, who we shall remind to lower her gain when she comes in, because she <laughs> has asked us to on a multitude of occasions. Uh, but she, again, she will be joining us very it soon. It should be fine this week because she has yet to play Abigail, so it should be okay. Okay, neato. So, uh, with that, let us give a brief recap of the things that happened last week. So, last week, we did the most impossible of things. We fast-played through an entire month of time. Or rather, close to an entire month of time. We still have a few days left in the Goliath camp before setting north. However, during this time, Arjan had a dream where he ended up communing with Makoth uh, and informing her of the situation with Arjan still being trapped inside of his heart, to which he got another visit from a dear goddess named Tiamat, who was not all too pleased about the fact that she asked one thing, which was to tell no one of the fact that Tarlane was trapped inside of this gem. Uh, as such, Tiamat uh, potentially threatened Makoth, one might say, uh, to Arjan, uh, and asked what he could possibly do to make it up to her. 
Also during this session, Calum was able to dance in the pale moonlight with a young, uh, with a young ghosty spirit named Amorous, and in doing so, levitated 30 feet up into the air, create turning milk into a fantastical healing ointment, doing something which is called the Night Stock, a uh, an ancient kind of, uh, I want to say, spiritual ceremony. Uh, to the goddess saloon. Also during this full moon, Coriander went out into the woods and danced until the flames left off of her body and was able to effectively dance once more with her old moon maiden companion, Oliviette. Uh, it was during this time that uh, there was a, a little bit of remorse in having to say goodbye, but you all ended up reconvening to which Calum found out uh, some rather dangerous news uh, in that he very well might be the child of the Raven Queen. And that is where we left off last week. So, uh, I will give you guys the space. Uh, at this point, this is after the conversation that you have had in kind of talking about this whole interaction. Uh, Gwen is once again called to speak with the Skyfire Council. Uh, to finalize the preparations for heading north towards Green Reach, what are the three of you doing in the meantime? Uh, Calum is going to walk back to his tent, kind of processing. All right. Anything else? Or just processing? Just, just processing. Okay. Silently. Arjan is uh, going to pick up his holy symbol, which was left in a zone of silence. And make its way over to Caleb. Hey. Hey. It's, uh... A lot you just had laid on you. Yeah. Yeah. I really don't know what to do right now. Is there anything you can do? Like... Obviously, we were thinking about making our way over to the rookery, but what's on your mind? Uh, obviously, a lot, but I, I don't know. With all of this Raven Queen nonsense going on, and with the Dark Star, and with the dragons, Tarlayan, this... I've made a list of things in priority, but it just keeps shifting. And I don't feel I can keep up with it. Nah. That there is way too much bullshit for us to handle. Life just hasn't been simple for us ever since we left Shroudpool. I guess right now we'll deal with what Gwen has to deal with. It's a lot easier than everything else right now. It really is. I really just want to deal with halfling melodrama. I have a few ideas what to do next. I think I'll ask Saloon if she knew. If she has any idea why this is happening. Why? How? Thanks, Arjan. I think... I think I'll be fine for now. Uh, 
I I'm not gonna pretend to understand how all of this is affecting you. But I'm the clone of an ancient black dragon who is a consort to the queen of evil dragons. So I'm, if you do need to talk, I have some understanding, I guess. I'm here. I'll be here. Kalen will take a step forward and hug Arjan. And after uh, probably about six and a half seconds, <laughs> Arjan will finally like lift lift an arm to like your uh, your bag to return it. D- Sorry, personal space. I should have asked first. It, 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 I'm here. But I will also give you some space. Thanks. And he'll leave. All right. And Corey, what were you doing during this time? You have just received quite a hefty amount of information uh, regarding the Raven Queen and this revelation with Calum. Uh, You saw him walk off in the direction of his tent, and as he was walking off, you saw Arjan walk over towards where his holy symbol had been discarded on the ground within the zone, pick it up, and then follow after Caleb. Yeah, um, there's a lot to unpack there. I think that um, it's still, it's it's like the middle of the day, isn't it? Yes. I think Corey um, is basically going to go for a walk. And just kind of try to, you know, process. Uh, she, it, it's going to be just like a lot of um, walking. Probably is a, a fair distance from the tribe. Um, she'll sum, summon uh, Ambleforth and um, walk with him for a while. And I think that she actually gets out her raven skull. And just sort of starts monologuing to it. Okay. Almost as if, um, like, she's not entirely certain if the Raven Queen can hear her through it, but she gives her a piece of her mind. She just kind of. She's unhappy about um she's unhappy with the raven queen at the moment and i I guess she has been for a while but yeah she'll just kind of get out that skull and talk to it okay uh and after about 45 minutes of uh do you ride amble forth or did you just uh summon them forward so that way you had a walking companion I think it's a walking companion okay. for now. Uh, yeah, she, she's she can ride him eventually. Okay, so after about uh, forty-five minutes of unpacking and kind of monologuing at uh, this Raven Skull, which Ambleforth kind of will like walk on your right side, then hang back and then walk on your left side, and you realize that they are actually like maneuvering you so that way you avoid any major obstacles. As you are walking, like, you aren't going to be tripping over any large rocks. Uh, And eventually you end up coming to a river. Uh, And as you are kind of finishing up, uh, giving the Raven Queen a piece of your mind, you finally look, uh, like, pull the Raven Skull down and look out. uh, And you can see that there is a, uh, that there is a small, very brightly colored duck that is sort of just kind of floating in the water that is looking back up at you. Uh, and oh, a real duck? It is a real duck. Interesting. Okay. Uh, what color is the duck? 
The duck is a mallard, so he has the very bright, vibrant green head. Uh, there is the black ring around its neck, and then kind of the uh, more uh, like brownish, uh, brownish blacker feathers that are kind of resting at it. Okay, not not gonna lie, I heard brightly colored duck, and I just thought rubber duck. There's a plastic duck in the water, just bobbing. <laughs> Indoor with the duck. <laughs> Cut Sorry, I, I had to do that. I love it. You know, I had um, to do it too. Uh, so yeah, you kind of look down and this duck uh, ends up looking back up at you. Uh, and then you see it s swim over to the side of the bank. And then it ends up kind of hopping up and makes its way over towards you. Um, if Cory has some rations on her, she'll get those out and start tearing them into little pieces. Okay. Uh, and as you, uh, it's, it's a little difficult to tear, uh, when you oh, only have enough. one hand, uh, to be able to do so. But, uh, the easiest way is to kind of like sit down, uh, and then just kind of set it between your legs and just kind of pull and pick at it, uh, from apart. But as you begin to feed this duck, uh, you see that eventually it comes over uh, and starts taking a few bites, and it seems to be genuinely enjoying the food that you give it. Uh, and then it kind of looks back up at you, and for a brief moment you see that its eyes flash into a kind of golden color. Uh, and it looks up at you, and you kind of hear uh, within you uh, this very nice reassuring voice uh and it says um worry not daughter soon you will find your way divine sense you are getting a sense of celestial and this cool. sense of celestial also does come with the smell of freshly baked bread yeah no just literally corlon like looking into the eyes of this duck. And as you say its name, the duck then just kind of locks eyes with you and then quickly begins to fly away. <laughs> um, I think she scrambles to her feet and like kind of chases him a little bit and then like comes to the bank of the river and then just watches him take wing. And it does. It just continues to kind of fly up the path of the river. Uh, and as you watch, and it just seems to kind of turn into this small black dot on the sky, this duck just seems to continue flying. Um, and as you look down where it had taken flight, you see that there is a golden feather. Uh, that is around the similar length to the raven feathers that are on your uh, necklace. She'll go pick that up. And in your hands, it has been very difficult to... It has been very difficult to feel a lot of things that have come from... Uh, after turning Revenant, it has been very difficult to kind of feel these uh, emotional conveyances, to to feel like you are able to cry again, to feel like you are capable of hunger, to feel like you are capable of taste. But in this very brief moment, there is a taste that you get. There is a sense of taste that actually comes onto your tongue, which is that of freshly baked bread. And it is the kind that... Uh, as far as you're able to be aware from, it is the same kind of taste that your father once made. The same kind of, like, freshly baked bread from when you were a child. This more nostalgic taste. Uh, she's just going to kind of, like, take that feather and then just hold it really close. Uh, close her eyes and just, like, the barest smile. Like, the, uh, uh, just a very subtle... And it is there for only a fleeting moment, and then it is gone. Hmm. And at this point, Ambleforth kind of comes up and starts nuzzling the side of your face, uh, 
more just kind of confused as to the situation as a whole. He is more of the... He's, he is definitely the derpy younger brother to the noble steed that you once had, so they might not get the same kind of uh, emotional conveyance, but they're trying. Yeah. I, I think she'll mount up and head back, but she's going to keep a hold of that feather. Okay. Uh, away somewhere safe. All right. So, yeah, you definitely uh, kind of put it into your side pouch. And then you begin uh, making your way back to camp as well. Um, so over the next few days, you guys are going to be getting a new cart uh, that has been kind of outfitted, has a lot more uh, supplies and utility. Calum, you are actually, after you have kind of expressed uh, a few times to the locals about needing glass baubles of a particular size, uh, they end up giving you eight of them. Thank gods. So yes, you've been given the eight of these kind of baseball-sized uh, glass orbs. And then what else would you like to do during this time? Uh, if possible, Caleb will ask Corey to summon Ampleforth. Should be easy as she arrives back in the camp riding on Ampleforth's back. Cool. Um, one second. And he steps into his tent. There's a shuffling sound. He steps back out, and there is like a small bundle and a scroll that's on top of the bundle. Um, could you send this back to your father? Oh, yes, certainly. Um, she'll dismount and take it, put it in Ambleforth's saddlebags. What, if I may ask, what, what exactly is it? One second, there's a mosquito. <laughs> Got it! <laughs> nice. Um, it's um, a transcript of my journal. I didn't know you kept a journal. I've been writing this entire time. I'm not a very perceptive person. <laughs> Honestly, it's the hair. It kind of gets in my face. Fair. Fair enough. But I figured with all the... <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just looking at what Connor was doing. Um, <laughs> with all of the memory loss nonsense going on that happened a while back. I figured keeping a journal would be a good idea. It's not a bad idea. And I figured the one of the safest places to send it back would be to your dad to hold on to in case anything were to happen to me. Well, my father might not be quite as safe as you think he is but I'm sure he'll do his best you know now that you're saying this can I just send this to your mom instead <laughs> that's not what I meant she'll just shove him with her <laughs> one arm uh, and she'll go ahead and uh, send Ambleforth off to her father okay sounds good yeah so you end up sending them back uh, that is no issue all right. So, is there anything else that you guys would like to do? All righty. So, it is at that time uh, that as these last few days have kind of been uh, coming around, you've noticed that the uh, Tread Thunder clan has been packing up. Uh, it looks like a lot of the tents and a lot of the utility that they had is kind of getting collected they are just getting ready for this rather large move as gwen has let you know on multiple occasions that the clan does not spend any particular like they they will spend a season in a location and then they will move to the next place and then they will move to the next place and it is a very cyclical kind of occurrence where they will try and stay near the same places every year 
as these are places that they deem preferable uh, for the benefit of the uh, of the clan as a whole. And so during this time, Gwen is definitely uh, very involved in this whole process. But you are all outfitted with uh, with wintry gear. Uh, you are outfitted with uh, fresh supplies, any kind of minor things that you would be in need of. You definitely have access to. Food is not an issue. And you begin heading out. Uh, and the direction which you are going is definitely towards Greenreach, at least as far as you can tell, Corey. The clan itself is going to be moving towards uh, towards Fildas by the end of the year. That is where they hope to be. But in the meantime, they are making a slight detour north as that is where their chieftain has regrettably in Gwen's mind, uh, decided to send everybody, or at least to get nearish them. And at this point, it is the start of spring. The thaws in the morning are getting a little bit more bearable. It's kind of warming up. Uh, the grass is not frost-covered first thing in the morning, and you can see that the sky itself is actually getting a little bit lighter. A little bit earlier or a little bit later in the day which is rather nice and you begin your mini day travel uh and you know that it is going to take 10 days if it was just the four of you and cybra to make it all the way up to green reach but with the entirety of the clan traveling with you you're looking at closer to a 15, 18 day journey just to make sure that nobody is left behind and that everybody's needs are being met. And so you begin to head off. Uh, and it is on the it is on the fifth day of this journey. Uh, Arjan, you find yourself sleeping once again and you are visited by your tiefling friend Makoth. And uh, as she, she doesn't seem like she has had anything happen to her. She looks like she's fine based off of your kind of initial looks. And as you two are playing dragon chess, she, you can see that there's actually something that's on her mind. She's not making moves with the same amount of confidence that she was making them with before. It looks like she is a little bit preoccupied. And you actually win the majority of the games that the two of you play. Because what's on your mind? Well, it's not very easy to hide things from you. Um, I... I had someone come to visit the shop a few days ago and they said that they knew you which uh, I always of course we am welcoming to friends of well my friends and <laughs> they said they could help Uh, who is this person? They said their name was Matea. And... Arjan. For 20 years, I have been in a pact with a creature I do not know. And they... They said they could help. Is Matea an anagram of Tiamat? Could be. You could use an insight check to find out. Would I, would I gain insight based off of her, though? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 14. So, as Makoth is telling you this, and she has this look of enjoyment on her face as she is telling you this just 
she doesn't know how to properly relay this to you for a very brief moment in out of focus behind her you see that there is a woman in blue sitting in one of the large red chairs within the dream space who is just looking at her nails and looks up at you and smiles puts a finger to her lips and Makath looks at you and says they said that they have that you told them about what had happened with you and what had happened with me and they they said that they have been looking into ways to break pacts I could be free I could be free from whatever this is. I don't you know what would happen if that was the case. I mean, you grow used to something for over a, a extended period of time. I, I don't know if I'd still be able to visit you in dreams if that power wasn't there. Um. And I, well, I asked about, about you as well. And she said that she would look into it. Ar Arshan is not doing a great job of maintaining composure. I don't know what to say. I... Something... It seems... Too good to be true. I want to believe it, I really do. But I always find myself in situations like this. You and me both. What do you think I should do? I think you should be careful. Of course. I always am. I be a lot more careful than I was. Well, to be fair, the mishap wasn't necessarily us not being careful the first time. It was us not directly knowing what we were getting into. But I don't They haven't said how they can get me out of the pact. And at this point, and she motions to her face, if I wasn't in the pact I was in, I don't know if I would still be able to actually see. Or if I would be glances able. over it to you Matt. and you see a very coy smile appear on her face and she gives you a wink I'm going to do research into it. I 
and that if there is if there's anything that can come of it that would end up having a a too great a negative repercussion i don't i don't know if i will but it's fun to pretend at least for a little while until you face with reality reality is often much scarier much more dangerous but yeah to overcome that danger that's at least something and I I started looking into what you said about well Tarlayan there might be a way to free him but I'm not sure and at that you see Tiamat raise an eyebrow in Makoth's direction Arshan it, uh, it's tense I don't even know if you want him back as much as well as much as he would like to be free I know he's important but I can keep looking I can keep finding a way something and she extends a hand out and puts a hand on top of yours and says I just I just want to help. I know. I know. Whenever Tiamat raised an eye, was that of like interest, suspicion? Can I insight check a god? Yes, you can. <laughs> Eleven. It looked like curiosity. Uh, if, if you think that that's a good idea, but Let's, um, uh, Mikasa, just be careful. I, I really wasn't supposed to tell anybody about what happened. And I'd rather not get out. I understand. I mean, I'm not out here telling everyone that, uh, friend of mine has an ancient black dragon spirit that resides inside of him and we're looking for a way to free it but I it'd be so much easier if I was still in Vascor but I will at least begin finding a way task around it not necessarily bring it up but well to ask different questions that lead to the same answer and if I find anything I'll let you know 
Thank you, MacArthur. It's really no trouble. And uh, that she uh, says, um, well, I don't think I'm, I really have it in me for another game. So I guess this is good night. And she just gives you a very wry smile and you see the environment around you beginning to fade. And as it does behind her, you just see that there is a beacon of blue of this goddess just looking at you with this very, very thin smile across her face and her eyes kind of squinting, looking towards you. Much in the same way that LB looks at me on Tuesday nights, but this is just Tiamat looking at you. Just... Mm. And that is the last thing that you see before you wake up. Alright. It's fine. Okay. Everything's fine. Everything's totally fine. Speaking of LB, yay! Speaking of totally fun, hey. I heard my name. <clears throat> Welcome. Let me fix up this layout. So, since you've been gone, I remember for the first time. Uh, since you have returned, uh, during this time, Arjan and Kalem had a brief aside. Coriander ended up going to the river where she met a duck that was. It was Celestia. just a duck. Wink. Uh, and was left with a nice golden feather. And Gwen, during this time, you have been helping out with the Tread Thunder clan to get them prepared for your move. Yeah. Now, we are going to do a brief little recap on your end, uh, as there are definitely some things that need covered. Cool. Yes. So, I am changing the layout now. Uh, Hello. I'm Coriander. <laughs> no, you're Gwen. Oh, uh, okay. oh yeah, that's right. I'm Gwen. God damn it. <laughs> Actually, no. you were Arjan for a while. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, and LB, uh, to also catch you up, you missed uh, just recently a dream sequence with Arjan and Makath, where Makath uh, informed Arjan that uh, somebody claiming to be a friend of his, a woman by the name of Matea, uh, has offered her a way out of her pact. Uh, it was during that dream sequence that Arjan also saw a form of Tiamat sitting on a couch behind Makath, uh, just slightly out of focus during said time. Now, Gwen, uh, during one of your meetings of the Skyfire Council, mm -hmm. uh, you are, you kind of have to explain uh or rather they they are under the understanding and knowing that uh you will not be able to necessarily be able to be with the tribe uh be with the clan throughout your adventures however chua has devised a method of you still being able to actually be able to communicate with them uh, and in doing so, this is a rather lengthy process of you learning how to not necessarily perform a method of astral projection, uh, but you are able to communicate with the spirits in such a way that you are able to hear the issues of the tribe and be able to actually deliver your advice and your take on that uh, from a distance. As you are getting ready and kind of gearing up to learn more about this, uh, Chua actually goes through the ritual with you at several points. Uh, and in doing so, as you, uh, as you enter into a meditative-like state, your vision comes to black and then eventually will recuperate uh, in the form of a large face. Uh, within a smokestack coming out of a kind of ceremonial fire. 
Uh, and in doing so, the tribe will be able to ask you questions directly. And as Chu is kind of communicating with you, uh, it's you're getting a little bit of a reverberating echo as you could still partially uh -huh. hear things while you're meditating, but you can also <laughs> hear them coming through uh, this large uh, this large gaseous form that you take uh, in order to actually perform this astral council. Cool. I'm Zordon. Pretty much, yes. You are a halfling Zordon to a Goliath council. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, with that, you have gathered the tribe, uh, and you know that it is going to take roughly 18 days uh, for the tribe, as well as all of you, to travel north. Uh, it would take the lot of you... 10 days to get there if it was just the four of you and Cybra, but seeing as how there is a tribe of close to 350 Goliaths that you also have to be moving at the same time, as well as all of their things, uh, the journey is going to be quite a bit longer, uh, closer okay. to about 18 days. And as you are continued, uh, continuing your way north, you are noticing that the weather is getting nicer. Again, uh, you have made it through the winter months as pray tell of you trying to get out uh, or trying to get ready to move your Goliath tribe and you begin heading north. Solid. Uh, yes, Calum has been given a bunch of glass orbs during this time so he can finally use his spale. Yeah. Yeah. And as you are on your way north, uh, again, the weather is very nice. Uh, everything seems to be going relatively smoothly. Is there anything that you would like to do during your travel? Um, did did we have a group chat about anything yet? The where we left off was the group chat about uh, Calum describing uh, his potential history with the Raven Queen. But other than that, uh, there has not been an additional talk unless Gwen would like to call one. Um, I think that during the move at some point we'll just uh she'll gather the four keeps and um boop, boop, uh kind of just get everyone uh have like a little powwow as we're walking or something like that or as they're walking and i'm riding cybra or we have the cart with our new friend whose name is rumble thunder rumble thunder <laughs> uh she'll just uh check in to see how everyone's doing with things with the move and all that nonsense and the cart itself uh is four wheels as opposed to the two-wheeled cart that you had before it has a top on it it is actually covered it looks like there is a place for you to actually put your things inside set up a little bit should you so choose uh, mm -hmm. And Rumble Thunder doesn't need really any kind of extra assistance to be able to pull this cart. Cool. All right, four keeps. How's everyone doing? It's been kind of chaotic. I know I've been kind of uh, distant recently uh, with all this stuff going on, so I want to make sure everyone's okay. I know that Calum had a big old bomb dropped on us recently. Uh, Sorry. Well, no. <laughs> How dare you and your lineage? Uh, processing, still. Well, we don't know what's going on yet, right? We don't know that you might be a man of intense lineage. Uh, that's a piece of an understatement. Yeah. Hi, I'm Calum. I'm the son of the Raven Queen. Please date me. That doesn't go over well than an icebreaker. Are you kidding me? <clears throat> the son of a god? Like, that's pretty boss. From how Coriander has described her, though. Well, I mean, you don't have to go into detail. Mm. I mean, you met my mom. Like, families. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Sigourney. Well, let's at least see if she was keeping her word about this raven skull. And 
then we'll know at least if she's a liar or not. True. Uh, just to be clear, when we get to Greenreach, I really don't want to deal with any of the nonsense, so I'll just be like, ooh, I need a new name. Uh, I'm going to keep my face covered for most of it, so like no one asks questions. Uh, maybe I'll take a, a name that's more goblin-ish. Hmm. Are you sure your nonsense is so much easier to deal with than the rest of us? Yeah. No, I'm sure it's not, but like it's, you know, it's something I don't want or need to be a part of apparently because uh the only reason that i would have dealt with it is uh left suddenly fair point that's very fair yeah i I kind of left for a reason and i don't want all the questions all right basically I, i totally get it um what's your backup plan Cool. Ooh, what because do you mean? You probably have one of those. Don't if, count on the fact that you're going to go to your hometown and no one's going to recognize you. Well, it's been like 20 years. I I was 13 when I left basically a child. Now I'm, I mean, I'm all tatted and my hair is different. And Gwen, you are very remarkable. And it would be very hard to forget you, I think. Well, I think I'm just going to be as quiet as I possibly can be. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good luck. I can try. <laughs> My backup is uh, amnesia. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. We'll see how it goes. Oh, sorry, Caleb. I didn't mean to open old wounds there. It'll be yeah. fine. It'll be fine. We'll just, you know, go straight to the thing. If we see Plum, say hi. Oh, we have to say hey to him. Yep. We do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be cool. It'll be fine. And this will be fine. Nothing bad will happen. It's not like some deity up there is guiding our actions to go this way and they're going to try and crush us with a gut punch. Yeah, what but it's... could like... possibly go wrong? Well, I, you guys don't really know about Greenreach. It's kind of like the most <clears throat> boring place in the world. Oh, you know what? I could use some boring right now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Actually, it might get a little exciting tonight. Huh? That's a problem for me. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry? I've Did you ask. find a female Goliath? Hey, then we need to know. <laughs> yeah, we... No, I, I have a date with someone, though. I'm gonna talk to my god... We talked about it, Arjan. Right. You have a date? Who, who? Come on. You gotta tell me. I'm going to speak with my goddess to see if she knew I was oh. the child of the Raven Queen. Oh. I was being... Oh facetious well don't get my hopes up caleb all right i want chill i want i want nieces and nephews okay i'm just putting it out there to all three of you nieces and nephews oh that's completely fair that's like that's on the docket uh if i'm being honest uh probably a little bit further down the line yeah 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 we got a lot of shit to deal with now but like planting seeds and such I'm sure if you wanted Corey, you could adopt a Goliath baby, you know. I, you know, you I'll, and, uh, I'll take that into consideration. They're pretty rowdy. I, I can handle rowdy. You can handle me if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, let's, uh, <laughs> so the plan is to, uh, get to green reach, find the thing, find your season. C plum if we can, and then GTFO. Yeah, that, that that is the plan. Unless there's some higher power that's keeping us in green reach for three weeks. Small business simulator part two. And as you the look up, can't tell us to do everything that we do. <laughs> we have agency. And as you look up at the sky. 
laughing at, uh, at the possibility that this de that these deities would keep you in a place against your will. You're not sure when it started happening. It could have even potentially started happening when you said, what's the worst that could happen? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> but the sky is a very deep gray. And gray. as you look up, you see that there are tiny specks of white that are coming down from these clouds. And there is a brief moment of cold as Calum, a snowflake, lands directly onto the tip of your nose. And as you are having this conversation and as you continue making your way towards Green Reach, you notice that the spring weather that you've been enjoying leading up till this point has been steadily going away. It doesn't feel like a cold snap. It feels more like you are almost like you're traveling deeper within the mountains. And as you kind of continue onward, there is a point where you realize that there is snowfall here. And the lot of you who have lived here on the actual plane itself, especially Gwen, you know that this is very unseasonal snowfall that this does not happen as soon as spring hap as soon as the month of armada begins within green reach it is fresh grass it is bright sunny days it is warmth it is a a beginning of vibrance but it seems like there is still this essence of cold mm. that is actually lingering and it gets to the point where uh the goliaths that you are traveling with uh they they know that they are getting near enough to green reach where their presence uh will probably end up raising some alarm so your encampment uh says that they are going to kind of set up camp here uh without kind of traveling further in at this time uh Calum, you would you were uh wanting to have a conversation with Saloon. Okay. He heads to the library, opens up the book, and stands there for a few seconds before... Hi. Hello. And there's a little smiley face that's drawn. So... Uh, we... We were in Gwen's tribe, and I had the Dan, the Night Stalk. I think you saw, correct? And then uh, I did. It was wonderful. Uh, some of the other people in camp saw, and um, the Sky Watcher there, Chua, called me into her tent, and she told me. I might be the child of the Raven Queen. There is a long pause from the book. And the response that you get is, do you believe them? I'm not sure yet. I was wondering if you knew. And the there is another long pause. And the response is I am the god I am the goddess of knowledge. I am the goddess of learning. There are still things that I have yet to learn. Right. A Shadarkai is a child of the Raven Queen. It is true. Was this figurative? I think it was literal. 
this time around, judging from what Coriander has told me, she's met with the Raven Queen. There was a mosaic of one of the <clears throat> adventures myself and Gwen had gone on, and she slammed the glass and said, bring me the child on my portrait. And there is a long pause again. Will you go to her? I think at this point, I don't think I have a choice. She might... <clears throat> she might hurt people I care about if I don't go. And I'll say what I said to Chua. I don't think I could live with myself if anyone else got hurt because of me. And there is a pause again. And the message that comes back, you see that it looks like it is trying to be written like there are words that are trying to get out but it seems like they'll begin and then they will be scratched out and the next phrase that comes is You believe you were this child. I don't know yet. It's a possibility. If I knew the name of the child, would you want to know? Yes. And you see that the words that are written out says their name is. And as letters are trying to form, it's almost like there is a layer of static that seems to just appear over the text that prevents you from actually being able to read it. And then you see a similar length again, and again, and again. Like she is trying to write out this name, but there is something that is blocking it. Indoor, how dare you? Hmm. What do I have in my arsenal? And you see at this point that Saloon is trying different ways of saying this thing, but each time there seems to be something blocking it. How does this book work? Is this connected some way to your mind? Is it you writing? These are my writings. This is the safest way. I guess I'll try and gamble on it. Wait, safest way? You said the safest way. What does that mean? My sister is not so keen on me. This is the safest way. Okay. 
where I am now, I can recover. You're hurt? Old wounds. I'll refrain from asking you where you are then. Um, we used to be the same. Now we are separate. Half of who I am is still recovering. All right. Um, could you focus on the name? I'm going to try something. And uh, she says, for you. He's going to try and use detect thought on the book to try and pull the name out. It's only surface thoughts, but I could combine it with encode thought to get a memory strand of it. Okay. If that's possible. Make an arcana check. Oh. Okay. 24. Okay. So as you cast uh, Detect Thoughts and then double that with Encode Thoughts, you feel, or while you are looking at the book, you see that even in its kind of more pristine layout that it was, the pages begin to yellow and crack, almost like it is being weathered by time. And as you focus and you pull out this thin strand of blue, you can see that this book is deteriorating very quickly. It looks like there is a lot of strain that is actually being put on it in order for this to happen. But eventually, you do pull it out. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know this would happen. I... And you see in very, very old lettering that looks like, again, it is also very weathered that just sort of bleeds in from the back of this page. It says it's all right. I will recover. Is there anything I can do to help? Believe in me. No matter what happens next, I will always be your cleric. And with that, the next message that comes, comes very slowly. And it says, what I did I did because I had to. I did because you asked. He's going to use encode thought again to snap the memory and see if he can get the name out of it. Make another arcana check. <sighs> Sixteen. The first letters that begin say the Princess of Owls. And then Ooh. the name that comes after is, or the name that comes after, you read as A-M-A-R-I-S.
Oh. Okay. You know, I think I know. I think I have a start on where I should look. What I should be looking for. When you were young, you asked for a friend. I was told to keep her safe. This was my task for you. Keep her safe. Can you do this? I'll die trying. You need to do more than that. If you die, you return to the queen. Right. Sorry, bad phrasing. I'll do everything I can. And more. The girl does not know. Should she be told? And there is another pause. I am unsure. Oh, I won't tell her for now, but I'm going to need to do a lot of research. The library is always open. Thank you. Again. And the last words that you receive out of the book that look again very weathered it looks like it's almost like when an inkwell is running out of ink and it says i'll be fine camel shut the book put a hand on it say a quick prayer and then leave and lock up and as you take a look at the cover of this book as you're saying your prayer it looks like the book has suffered a thousand years of weathering the pages are old and yellowed you can see that they are cracking and breaking along the sides almost as if they might deteriorate at any moment. It looks like there was a lot of effort that was put in on Saloon's part. And as you exit the library and close the doors, as you look out at the plateau in the night sky above, you see hundreds of thousands of ravens circling. This plateau is part of my dream sp dreamscape, right? That it is. <clears throat> He's going to concentrate and try and basically replicate himself as many times as he can with as many guiding bolts 
in his hand as possible and try to just let them out into the flock of ravens. Make another arcana check. Twenty natural. Okay. Now make a concentration check. Uh. As you have just summoned an equal number of Kalums to combat these ravens, but maintaining concentration of this is something entirely different. Cool. Um, I get advantage because of Warcaster, right? <laughs> This is not for warcasting. It kind of is. I'm about to combat some ravens. Um, concentration is plus arcana. No, plus constitution and proficiency, correct? This would just be your uh, con mod. Uh, basically a con save. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, 14... So you will be able to create all of these duplicates. All of them will be able to cast these guiding bolts. Caleb, when you wake up, you will have three levels of exhaustion. Cool. I really showed her. Ow. Thankfully, you are still several days travel away from Green Reach. However, when Caleb wakes up the following day, he looks he looks knackered. He looks very tired. He looks haggard. So I'm assuming it didn't go well. Oh, it went perfectly well. Uh, found out my cause. Found out why I'm not the child. Oh. Can I can I have some coffee and can wait. someone like set that kettle off there's like a ringing wait 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 not the child no nope. uh, what happened i'm not the child the maury child says i'm not oh. the child solid <sighs> cory will come up and put a hand on his forehead and give him some lay on hands thanks you want you want like you want goliath espresso is it made with yak milk? No, it's just straight black. Make it a double. <laughs> All right, get ready for heart palpitations. Quinn leaves. I time. live with heart palpitations. It's called existence. <laughs> <sighs> Caleb, if if you're not the child, then who is? I am at. I am not at liberty to say right now because she might be listening. Oh, wait, no, she knows. She knows. She knows who the child is. He nods over at his shield. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, Selene's tasked me to protect the child. So, I'm guessing not going to the rookery is a good idea now. But we're going to have to be fighting a lot. <sighs> Okay. Someone smell burnt toast. Here. <laughs> More lay on hands. The lay on hands. It does nothing. <sighs> it's fine. She's doing her best. <laughs> it right, helps Caleb, her. <laughs> don't don't drink this all at once. She hands him a huge mug of black liquor. Oh, I guess it's lay on hand. Oh. Caleb fucking chugs it. And as Calum is chugging this black liquid and Corey is trying to lay on hand, that is where we are going to go into our break for the evening. So I would like to say thank you to all of you fantastic people for joining us on this righteous adventure thus far. Thank you to these fantastic players uh, for putting up with my bullshit every week. We are going to try and be back in five to ten minutes. So don't go no place unless it's to grab a food, grab a drink, grab a friend, or possibly leave us a review. Let us know how we are doing on either AudioCast or our VODs. I enjoy reading them because I share them with all of these players. So we're going to try and be back shortly. So don't go no place. All right, everybody. Bye-bye! Caleb! Uh, yeah... I think we are on a great adventure today. What do you think? 
I think I have a lot to talk about. Oh, Corey, what do you, uh, Arjan, what about you? I want to talk uh. about it. <laughs> and Gwen? I'm Gwen, evidently. <laughs> I just realized we were doing this <laughs> Fuck gnomes, am I right? That's very I, on brand for you. I really don't think you should keep saying that. I'm yes. sure. Yes, Guinevere, it's very upsetting. I'm sure it'll be fine. So hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. Uh, those were not their original character voices, although if you pay attention to the pilot, it very well could have been. But... That is besides the point. So, uh, Calum has just woken up. He is feeling very tired after finding out that Amaris uh, is the child of the RQ of that there Raven Queen. Uh, and you guys are still several days journey away from actually making it to Greenreach. Caleb, you got a you got a finger up in the air for all our. Uh, if they're still in his days. tent, he points at the doorway. Zone of silence. Looks at Arjan. Mimics the metal into the. I will gingerly place it down this time, but it is also in the silence. I am not the child. The what? I am not the child. I, we, we've been over this, yes, um, but. Talk to Saloon. She's somewhere healing. Apparently she's hurt. Gods can get hurt? I mean, well, yes, that's the entire reason that elves exist. Weren't you like, weren't you like just really convinced that you killed one? I know, but like, what has she done? There were some things said. I, I need to process what was said. All right, why don't you go run a lap? You're going to need to work that off. No, I can feel my bones rattling, and I think that's okay. You shouldn't have chucked it, dude. I told you. It's fine. Anyway, I'm tasked to protect the sh He looks over at the shield, gingerly picks it up, puts it into the zone of silence. <laughs> by, by saloon? Yes. She took the child from the Raven Queen and right. gave me the shield. She put the child in the shield. Okay, all right. Question. Yes. Don't you use the shield to like protect yourself? Physically, yes. I think this is more on an arcane divine level. Like magic bullshit. I should also probably consider not using it as much just in case it breaks because I don't know what'll happen if it breaks. Solid. I was going somewhere with this. Right. So. I'm really tired. Who are you? I'm Calum. No, I don't where, know who I am. Where did you come from? The monastery? Because we thought we'd figured this out. And now... There's a question that begs to be asked. That Are you the child of Saloon? I don't think she has Shatterkai children. I mean, when a man loves a woman. Arjan, have you ever seen a Shatterkai? Aside from Caleb. Door? I don't think so. He wouldn't have seen them because Shatterkai are defenders of the realm. They're not allowed to leave. Well, they can't leave. So how did you? There, there have been a lot of blood hunters that have made packs with Shadowfell stuff. It's probably a couple of Hexblade Witch Knights. He is Calum. He's our okay. he's our he's our sweet boy. I, I think at this point I'll table the whole existential question of who I am for the moment because I think if I if I find out any more I might overload. This is a lot. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. But hey, at least you're not the child of the goddess of dying. You know, honestly, I had monologued a little bit about telling her off and i don't think that would have gone over well if i tried to tell her off in person and she says ha 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 you're not my child smote yeah let's not piss off any more gods okay yeah that would have been rather embarrassing that wouldn't it okay i'm definitely on board with not making any more gods angry another yeah. thing Yes, Gwen. Why is it winter? It shouldn't be winter right now. Climate Here. sucks, sure. Shouldn't. I'm going to need to summon Ambleforth and see if there's a response from my father. Maybe. Don't do it in here. I'll drop the zone of silence because we're off the topic. Uh, um, Corey will leave. And just kind of walk out into the is there snow on the ground? There is snow on the ground. It's accumulating. Yes. All right. Corey will walk off into the snow to go sumble, su- sumble, amble, forble. Okay. Uh, Gwen will grab Caleb's hand real quick and just say, hey, no matter who your parentage is, it doesn't mean you're any different than who you are. I can tell you that from experience. Um. I don't really, you know, I think it's mostly just for the sake of knowledge because I've got all the family I need right now. She squeezes his hand. Ow, ow, ow. Sorry, sorry. I just, that was, <clears throat> that really hit me. I'm going to go talk to Chua and see what the spirits are saying. Can I come with you? No. Oh. Of course you can come with me. Oh. <laughs> okay. You're the chieftain. I can't tell you no. <laughs> well. That's right. This is my my bitch, Arjan. What? With me. Why? Why? Because I want you to be part of this. Okay. Kill will pick up his shield and then head over to Chua's tent. Okay. So yeah, you guys uh, go over to Chua's tent, uh, and you can see that she's kind of bundled up, and she. Uh, she has a look of of consternation on her face. She doesn't seem to like the cold uh, very much, mostly just because she has older bones, makes things difficult. Uh, and as the three of you arrive, uh, she gives a gives a gentle bow. My chief then. Hello. Hello. Can I help you with anything, my chieftain? Uh, no, I am satisfied at the moment. However, my friend, Calum, has a, a something he'd like to speak with you about in private. Uh, I don't think looks so. at the others in the tent being both you and Arjan. Is this private enough? Yes, Calum. Um... Honestly, I was wondering, Gwen had pointed out that this weather is very unnatural for this area. If the spirits had said anything, have been saying anything, something's wrong here. Uh, It is true. Uh, This weather is uh, not exactly uh, seasonal. We have made this trip every year for as long as I have been the Sky Watcher. The spirits do not... It's a long time. The spirits do not have anything to say. I don't believe. Uh, They just keep saying that once we go west, the weather will improve. They don't seem to really have any care about Greenreach. Mm. Can you see um, Grayskull? Like right now? If I try, I, I could see him. Why do you ask? 
I'm just wondering about how this works. I am a sky watcher. I'm not, uh, I do not regularly converse with the spirits uh, without preparation. Mm -hmm. If he wishes to make himself known, I'd be able to converse with him. But otherwise, I need at least a little bit of prep time. It's fine. Anything else you want to talk about, Calum? I mean, I, I don't know. I I've said pertinent information. Should I? I'm going to have to burn another. He <laughs> takes a step and then points at the door again and casts another silence spell on the door. Ah, jeez. Hey. I'm really tired one. I, I understand, but I, I can tell her. Chua, we figured out who the child is, and it is not Calum. It is his uh, spirit shield. And at that, she uh, kind of squints. And she nods and says uh, well if that is good to say the least um do you have any concerns about this i I'm glad it is not you. Honestly, I kind of wish it was because then I have a course of action that I would take, but now it's just going to be us on the run for a while. And why is that? I have to protect the girl. I have to protect the shield. And bringing the shield to her is not protecting her. And Corey wants to bring the shield to her. Or at least that's what she's been tasked with. So we're kind of at a bit of an impasse here. Oh, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. That, that's going to be shitty. Mm hmm. That's a bad idea. Ugh. Do you have any uh, suggestions for us, Skywatcher? I none that I could say that would that would make it any easier. I speak on behalf of the Raven Queen to the tribe. I might want to have a conversation with her then. If this is something you are interested in doing, I can see about making arrangements. Can I join him? We can try. To establish this would mean she would also seek to speak to you as well. She is fickle. Because you are my chieftain, I will do my best to try, but I am not. If he sure. goes, I goes. I will do my best, my chieftain. How does the process work? The process works through a spiritual means. In the same way that uh, a chieftain has been able to help instigate meditative states with your friends, 
we will do something similar. It will have a few more steps to it uh, as you have a direction in mind. And if it successful, if the Raven Queen is willing, then we act as a channel. If she does not wish to speak, then she will not speak. Okay. Um, I think it's best if Coriander not be here. Raven Queen might still hold some influence over her. Are we listening in? I mean, at this point, <laughs> we're going to be speaking with her, so listening in is a little... Yeah. How quickly can we do it? I can prepare something... Uh, it could be ready by nightfall. Maybe in a couple <clears throat> days, Galem, you look pretty rough. A little bit of rest. All right, two days. I will see what I can do. Thank you, Chua. Thank you. She bows. How is uh, preparations going for our uh, camp? Yeah, preparations are going fine. Uh, you were able to, mm, well, direct us as well as you could. Most people, this is not their first journey. Uh, even if they did not hear your orders, they still learn from others. All right. I'll probably do a couple rounds to make sure everyone's got what they need and there's no dangers on the horizon. Though, <laughs> around Green Reach, I feel like there's not a lot of dangers, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Just the snow. I think that overall, the most dangerous thing that you will end up facing will probably just end up being in-laws. Yeah, no, that's not going to be something that I want to deal with and probably won't deal with. <laughs> uh. um, Arjan, while we do this, can I entrust this little one to you? And he taps the shield. He takes a very, very long silence. I will keep it safe for you. Yes. Thank you. Chua, is this shield? Do you sense anything from it? Do you... I mean, is it a ghost? Is it a, a soul trapped? I would have to spend some time with it based off of what I've seen it looks like a spirit yes a ghost I am not sure uh. some form of spirit yes yeah based off of the way it interacted uh, it does not seem evil no and uh Grayskull said that he couldn't see it in the spirit realm so it's not one of ours. Right. All right. Is there anything else, boys? I'm going back to sleep. All right. Two days, Chua? She nods. 
You're doing a great job. Thank you for everything. And uh, she says, I am to make you proud, Chieftain. And I am to make you proud. And she has a smile kind of play across her face. And then goes back to the fire that is uh, in the middle of her tented area and goes back to kind of warming herself. Gwen is going to make sure that everyone's comfortable where we are and uh, make sure that there is enough wood to go around and scout, help with the scouts to make sure that, come on, <laughs> to make sure that uh, there are no dangers around with her brother. And... Okay. Sounds good. So, Corey, uh, or sorry, before we leave, Arshan. Uh, during this scene within the tent, I uh, just wanted to check you were still wearing your pendant, correct? Yep. Sure was. Okay. It definitely does feel a little bit warmer against your chest. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to establish that. Corey, uh, as you are wandering off with Amble uh, to resummon Ambleforth, uh, you definitely take some time trudging through the snow, uh, and it is it has not stopped falling at this point. And as you are kind of taking a general stock in, um, make a perception check. Mm mm. Mm mm. Like that. And I choose to fail and ignore whatever's happening. Uh huh. <clears throat> a twenty-two. A twenty-two. So, as you are making your way to resummon Ambleforth, you are definitely taking in large breaths uh, as you are going forward. And after about maybe ten minutes or so. This definitely smells familiar. This snow smells familiar. This is not the snow of the material plane. It smells like a, a period of time that you spent on the Winter Isle. Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and summon Ambleforth like, as quickly as possible. <laughs> and you do uh, and there are when Ambleforth ends up trudging back uh, you reach into the uh, the saddlebag on its side and you re and you see that there is a note one note that is written for Calum and another note that has been written out for you okay um, I tuck away the note for Calum uh, and hastily read the note for me so the note for you that you end up reading uh, has a is basically saying um, that uh, it says hello back uh, reminds you that your father loves you very much uh, and then there is a uh, there is a follow-up question which says, uh, your friend lost his leg, and then follows it up with, uh, but the dimensions you gave are for an arm. <laughs> and uh, then you see that there is a very cute drawing of what looks to be a little elf uh, that has just a third arm where a leg should be and said and it said how would and then how would they even walk is it like this and you see a little picture of an elf trying to walk with an arm where its leg should be or would it walk like this and the arm is like just flat with its hand out like a foot uh it seems like he is just trying to add some some levity to the situation as a whole that's adorable um, I think that Corey laughs nervously, um, but the, the situation that she's in right now is very stressful. Um, 
she's going to like she, she she's like constantly like looking over her shoulder to make sure like she's not actually in the Feywild that like she, she keeps on saying to herself can't be we're not we're not actually here um and she'll just take out a parchment and um kind of lean it up against Ambleforth's uh flank and um attempt to write a response um and she like starts the letter several times over trying to like fabricate some sort of lie um but like she, it's very difficult to like hold the page against a, a a living creature with one arm and also write on it um and like she realizes this isn't going to work um and she just tells him the truth she tells him that Calum lost a leg he's taken care of he's got like a bean leg now it's fine um i had a little accident <laughs> um it's it's for me i i lost i i tried to go through a portal and it didn't work out um <laughs> i need to know the situation with winter things don't look so good over here um and hugs and kisses love you a whole lot um tell mom i said hi uh rolls it up sorry <laughs> and gives it back to Ambleforth and sends him off. Make a dexterity check for me. Oh, fuck. Natural 20. Okay. It's actually an incredibly legible letter, which is good. You got everything that you needed to say and even missing an arm. Uh, it seems like through sheer force of will, you have been able to, to pen in everything that you were hoping to do. Uh, and then you slide your letter back into the saddlebag and then send it off. Uh, send it back off towards the Feywild. Just kind of blow on her hand, rub her shoulders, looking around at just the snow everywhere. Um, and then she's going to run back to the camp. Okay. And when you arrive back at the camp, Calum has begun resting. Uh, yet again, you will not be able to enter into sleepy time as it has been too, uh, too recent since your last long rest in order to do so. Uh, but what are the rest of you doing? I know that Gwen, you are off helping prepare the rest of the tribe. Arjan, what are you up to? Uh, I'm working on my, uh, on my business plan. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so... Uh, Corey, where are you going after you have returned? Um, I want to find one of my nerds. Um, just whichever one seems available. If Kalem is resting, I'll go to Arjan. Yeah. What's, what's, what's going on? Um, Arjan, uh, is there, is there a waystone nearby? Is there a waystone nearby? Is there a waystone nearby? Arjan, make a history check. Bloodhunter? Yes. That's 20. Okay. Damn. You know that there is actually a waystone in Greenreach. That's one in Greenreach. It's not good. Oh. So you think, you think Greenreach is going to be the epicenter? I... I do. We we need to find that waystone and shut it down. Destroy it. Whatever it takes. If Cyprus gets into the natural plane, I'm not in any state to face him. All right. If how long until we keep how long until there are just aren't any waste zones left? I'm sorry. What'd you say? How how long until there aren't any waste zones left? I mean, we've already destroyed for the fall one. <sighs> 
I don't know. It's... We have... We have to do it. If there's another way, I mean, I'm sure we could probably find it, but... We, we can't let him in. I understand. That, 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 that's, that's it. He, he's like, okay. How, how far are we from Greenreach right now? Are you know that you off? are several days away. Are we going to split off from the Goliaths at some point? Yes. Because the Goliaths don't want to go there. Okay. Um, I could go ahead. I, I don't have to sleep. I don't even need to trance anymore. I could just go. Corey, you shouldn't go without backup. What if Cypress say? What if Cypress already makes his way through? Then all the people of Greenreach are going to be at his mercy. Caleb and Gwen have something in two days still with the tribe. I can go with you. But we have but we can let we have to let them know. Of course, of course. I would I wouldn't dream of leaving without telling anyone. Uh, Archon begins shoving his things uh, into his pack. Okay. Um, Corey's gonna go find Gwen and Calum. Okay. So Gwen, you were out doing scouting uh, with Teresa, or at least helping him out with the scouting, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so while you are out on the scouting mission, uh, a blizzard actually rolls through. Ugh. I need you to make a dexterity save. Okay. Okay. All right. My god, I don't think I even have... Ooh, that's a four! Let's see. Dexterity is a plus... One, five. You are going to be taking twenty points of cold damage. Is it something I can see? It is a blizzard, so I can yes. roll an advantage. <laughs> Seventeen, eighteen. Okay, so you're going to take half of that. <laughs> okay, how much was that? That was a total of twenty, so you'll be taking ten. Okay. Oh Jesus, kitten, stop! You're going nuts. All right. And I would also like for you to roll for Cybra. For Cybra? I don't want to roll for Cybra. Is she your mount? Yes. I rolled a natural 20, so suck a dick. She's she's feeling very frigid. She's very cold, but she's still good. good. Speaking of, uh, Connor, you rolled your blood die today. Steven, I don't want to add another name to doesthedogdie.com. <laughs> Just because I did it doesn't let it's, you go. It's okay. Oh, spoilers. Five. Okay. We have a five on the blood die. It's good. So, uh, Calum, you end up sleeping through this, but Arjan, you and Corey see that there is this heavy snow that ends up coming through. Uh... Gwen, you and Terezo end up determining that you need to turn back uh, mm -hmm. from actually getting too close to Greenreach and your adventuring, your small scouting party ends up turning around as well and heading back. 
uh, okay, when I return uh, to uh, the Four Keeps tent, Gwen will, like, dust off all of the snow. She'll, like, do a dog shake. All right, that's fucking weird. That's not normal. What the fuck is going on? Are, are Corey and I there? Yeah. As Gwen has said that she is returning to the Four Keeps tent, which I'm assuming is just the retrofitted Chieftain's tent. It's about right. And Calum, you are there. You haven't been able to sleep yet, but you have been summoned by the Chieftain. <laughs> I think Green Ridge is the epicenter of what's happening here. What do you mean? Do you remember what happened? Shoot, what 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 was the name of um, the ruins? The Hollow Locks. Locks. Do you remember what happened at the Hollow Locks? With the Autumnal Fay. Yes, with the Waystone. Yeah. Yes. I'm afraid that's what's happening here. But that's it's oh. that's a West Waystone and Green Reach, isn't there? Where? Uh, Gwen, you would know that the Waystone in Green Reach. Uh, was actually under the familial protection of the Thimblefish family. You make me take a note. Okay. So, wait, wait, wait. You mean the Thimblefish? Thimblefish. They're nonsense? Okay. okay, that's good to know. So, wait. You think that the winner's coming from for Feywild from there? Yes. Yes. I'm almost certain of it. It's familiar. And we're not sure how much time we have left, but I don't think we can wait for your communion. Caleb? I, I think you'd need these answers. But I think Corey and I are going to see up ahead. <laughs> not alone. No, we I won't have be alone. Corey, Corey has me. Exactly. Not the two of you alone. I mean, if we're doing something, we're doing it as a group, okay? We're a family. That's what we do. It's very heartwarming. There isn't time. We do need to get moving. Quickly. All right. Corey, I've sworn to see this through with you. That wasn't just bullshit. I understand. What time of day is it? At this point, it is well into the afternoon, closer to uh, closer to the end of midday, like uh, early evening. How hardy are these uh, creatures that are pulling? That would be the Arocs seem to be completely at peace in the snow. They don't care. Right. Well, if you guys bunker down in the back, I can hold the fort in the front. Of the cart. We can leave now. I would appreciate that. I'm still pretty banged up. So when I'm at full, I'll follow you guys. No, we're not going to leave you behind. I we'll just get a bunch of furs and stuff. I'm the chieftain. I can just be like, bitches, put this shit in the cart. Caleb has answers that he needs. I don't want to take that away from him. We have a place we can come back to for that. This is more important. Sorry, Caleb. It's fine. No, you're this right. Is this is more pertinent. More, this is more pertinent. We can shelve it for later. I learned a word from Caleb. I'm proud of you. <laughs> All right. I'll get the cart ready. We can leave in an hour. Get your shit together. Physically or emotionally? And then Kaelm leaves. <laughs> Cor uh, Gwen is going to go and uh, get the uh, correct amount of supplies and such to for us to be able to leave and travel to Greenreach in the next hour. I'm going to inform Chua that we're shelving it. That too. <clears throat> She says that she will prepare for it nonetheless, and it will be ready upon your return. Thank you, Chua. She nods. It's no problem. My chieftain has asked me to do it, so... It 
That's something I must do. Yeah, she's very demanding. I'm so sorry. It's okay. That is all right. Uh, if I may ask, uh, what is it that is causing you to leave so soon? Oh, boy. <laughs> he probably has all his stuff ready, so he's just going to sit down. So, uh, back at the Hollow Lock Ruins. Boom! <laughs> just runs through the entire situation. And now there's there's a waystone in Greenreach that is probably letting in Winter Fay, and it's freezing the place. So, we're going to try and go take care of it. Yeah, me too. May the gods be ever in your favor. Um, there you go. <laughs> <clears throat> Knowing what I know about some gods, I hope I don't lose favor. <laughs> she nods. Huh. Okay. And as you uh, make your way out, uh, Gwen, you have definitely outfitted your cart with all of the supplies and rations that you would need, and the lot of you are gearing up to head out to Green Reach. Uh, Gwen would have summoned an emergency meeting of the council just to let them know that she was leaving then as opposed to in a couple days when they had planned. Um, and kind of inform them what was going on and that Chua can fill them in and she will be in touch and finger guns her way out of that conversation. <laughs> they ask you if they if they should stay here or if they should return back to where Spring is still there. Um, she'll inform them because they haven't really set up anything yet. Not I mean, not, not anything like no. substantial, yeah. So she'll she'll tell them it's probably a good idea to head further south to where winter isn't affecting as much, um, and uh, keep keep to Chua's uh, intuition. She'll be in contact and uh, tell everyone she's sorry, and she'll bring back a lot of mead for and everyone. They all just sort of like, yeah. Halfling mead. Okay. okay. Yeah, that sounds yeah. fine. Like they are <laughs> totally down with that. So uh, then they say that they will get ready to head out the following morning. Um, Solid. And so within the hour, all four of you, uh, Cybra is feeling very tired uh, mm -hmm. after having getting, uh, gotten caught within the blizzard, but she's she's still willing to travel with you all although she's spending more of uh most of her time within the cart uh rather than actually out with uh with rumble thunder yeah Gillum throws a fur cloak over her and just snuggles in all right girl we're gonna take a nap yeah she kind of nestles down to let you snuggle uh and the four of you begin making your way uh who is driving the cart Gwen said she would, so. Okay. So, Gwen, make an animal handling check. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I make it an advantage since I have handled these creatures before? Yes. Solid. And Corey, you, Ooh. Arjan, and uh, Caleb are all in the cart, correct? I'll sit up front with Gwen if I can. All right. <laughs> 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 Alrighty, so Gwen, uh, as you maneuver this creature through the snow, Corey, you occasionally will bring out your raven's necklace to kind of maintain a proper directional front as to where you need to go. The night ends up uh, coming quicker than you had initially expected. And as you are kind of making your way, uh, as it begins to reach uh, that nightfall, kind of that twilight moment, uh, you see that there is another storm front that is rolling through, just this heavy blizzard. Uh, so I'm going to need Gwen and Corey to both make dexterity saves. 
Um, I have a question. Sure. <laughs> this wouldn't happen to be a, a spell effect, would it? This would not be. Okay, just checking. Depth is seven. Add advantage. Um, hey, 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 hey. But you are within 10 feet of me, so get a plus three. Oh, plus three? I, I got a natural one, though. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Ten and a natural one. We're doing great up here. You guys are doing great. This is fantastic. Okay. Things are fine. So. He's getting dice out. Yes, just like I did previously. So. So that is a total of 11. Uh, so 13 was the number that you were looking to beat. Mm -hmm. Did not do that. 11 damage? Yes. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Do you have resistance and you're, since you're in a certain cold? Are you in your form? That No? Okay. That's fine. I don't get resistances for my forms. Um. You'd think, but nah. Okay. So yeah, the cold front ends up sweeping past, uh, sweeping past the two of you, and I would like for you both to make perception checks as you are peering through this blizzard. This dice is throwing me for a loop today. Eighteen. Seven. So Gwen, you, you're trying to just focus on keeping rumble thunder uh moving in a straight line in accordance with the uh with the necklace that Corey is kind of bringing out and holding with one hand on occasion and the wind is sharp it is howling at this point but Corey, you hear something past the howling you hear what sounds almost like a roar and as you are looking through up in the up in the horizon coming towards you you see that there is a large figure that actually seems to be flying towards you and there are very large wings as well as this large kind of bulkier body and with the 17 peering through this blizzard you can see that there are two large front legs two large back legs and this body of pure white that seems to be coming towards you. Right now? Yes. Aggressively? Yes. <laughs> and Look out! <laughs> as it is coming towards you, you see this creature's head pulled down as a burst of pure white icy energy pegs against the ground and then just sweeps in front of you. What are you and Gwen doing? As, you, as Corey, you see this happening... And Gwen is still focused on the Auroch. Um, real heat. There, uh, there's an ice slit going out in front of us in particular. Yes. Um, <laughs> I only have one thing for this. Uh, I'm going to cast Speak with Animals and jump onto the back of Rumble Thunder. And I'm going to try and direct her away. Okay, uh, make a animal handling check. With advantage, because speak with animals? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh my god! Did you get um, the blomps? I got two of them! <laughs> what? I can't, I can't bring it over, but... <laughs> Gods really want you to succeed. I okay. guess so. I'll take a picture, man. So, as this uh, begins coming through, this burst of white, Gwen, you look up in time to see that there is what you would expect to be the form of a dragon. What you have heard to be the form of a dragon flying through the sky as it just levels this almost cone of cold against the ground that then shoots forward. Corey jumps on the back of Rumble Thunder and barely manages to get it out of the way without actually suffering any of the ill effects from this. But the back wheel of your cart 
ends up getting a little bit of frost on it. Arjan and Kalem, inside of this cart, you hear Corey yell out, get out of the way. Uh, and then there is a kind of rattling motion on the side of your cart. Uh, Cybra begins whimpering a little bit, and then all four of you can actually hear a shrill, draconic cry echoing through the air. Well, uh, I would like for you all to roll initiative. Was that a fucking dragon? Okay, fuck, those aren't supposed to be here. Natural one. Four. 18. Nine. Arjun, you said you got a four? Yep. And Gwen, what'd you get? Rolling at advantage, I got a plus one. Or I got an 18. Okay. All righty. So... Sounds good. All right, so first off is... Caleb, you said you got an 18? Well, Gwen has an 18 and a higher okay, modifier sweet. than I so do. Okay, sweet. So Gwen, what would you like to do as this creature is just flown above you, spraying down this icy blast, and then is turning around, and it looks like it is going to try and make a second pass? Uh, Gwen is going to uh, take out the Sunforger and throw that bitch at it because that's all she got, bro. Um, yeah. She's, well, okay, first Gwen would like to Tiny Rage. Okay. And then she's going to recklessly attack. Um, and that's a 17 to hit. Okay. Uh, so Sunforger, you just throw. And then right, it right. is a save on... Oh, right, right. They need to make a 15 dexterity saving throw. Oh, jeez. I need so many D6. D womp, 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 womp. Oh, my God. No! Uh-oh. Yay. So it's going to take all around. All right. So 66. That's 5 plus 6. Oh, my gosh. Okay. 6 plus 4 is 10. Yeah. That's 22 damage total. Okay. So it is going to be taking 11 off of that. Mm -hmm. And then she'll just shout back, fucking dragon! Okay. With a question mark at the end. And Calum, did you roll your initiative at disadvantage because of your exhaustion? 14. Okay. Sounds good. So you will still be going next. Oh, sick. Uh, Calum hobbles out, half movement, gets to the front of the cart, pulls the curtain aside. How far is this dragon away? This dragon looks like it is about 100 feet away. I'm going to hold my action for it to get within 60, and then I'm going to cast Command Leave. Okay. And I'm going to speak it in Draconic. Sounds good. So... Next up, you see Corey and Gwen. Uh, as you have thrown this uh, Sunforger out, I'd actually like for all three of you to make perception checks really quick. Eighteen. Uh, Eighteen as well. With disadvantage? Yes, 19. I rolled a twelve and then a Okay, seven. excellent. Oh, do I roll? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So the three of you, seeing the snow and cold kind of burst out to the side in front of this dragon as you end up hitting it with the Sunforger, there is a brief moment where looking up, you see that there is a small form that is actually riding on its back. And this creature begins making very quick hand movements and points down as a lightning bolt actually shoots out of his hands towards your group. Uh, Gwen, I need you and Corey to make a dexterity save. And then Corey, I would like for you to make a dex save for Rumble Thunder as well. Okay, is she within 10 feet of me? Rumble Thunder is. Because uh, you hopped onto its back. 
is Gwen within 10 feet. Uh, never mind. She gets an advantage anyway. She can see it. <laughs> I got a 13 on the dice. Do I get plus anything else? Plus three for being within 10 feet. Okay. So 16. You rolled a one, Corey. It's a two, but you know, oh. I, that means I rolled a six. <laughs> oh, and Rumble Thunder, the Auroch is dead. No, I Just rolled a two, and Rumble this. Thunder got a one. <laughs> See, that's just cosmic balancing for the double 20s. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I, I, I had, I, I thought about doing this earlier, um, but now that she's going to die. Um... No. Rumble thunder. <laughs> well, uh, Corey, you and Rumble thunder both take 25 points of oh. lightning damage. Cool. Gwen, you are I'll... going to be taking half. And Rumble yeah. thunder has a total of 38 HP. So oh, if nice. anything, it just lets out a like a very like disgruntled <laughs> bovine noise. That's right. Rumble Thunder's too tough. <laughs> okay, so Calum. Or no, that was your turn, Calum. Uh I just want to say this is anyways. the first time I have been targeted with a spell uh that does damage since I got this feature. <laughs> so I'm just I'm I'm just a pickle I'm a pickle peach. I'm 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 happy to clear. Sweet. Speaking of happy clams, Corey, it's your turn. Huh. Okay, God. Um, does that dragon look like it's going to come back around? It does look like it is making your way, and its rider seems to kind of be, like, motioning towards you. Cool. I'm going to hold my action. I want to try and face step onto the dragon when it comes around. Okay. Sounds good. So, next up, it time for dragon. Uh, and it most certainly does make its way towards the lot of you. Uh, and it seems to swoop down. Uh, and at this point, as it gets close, Gwen, you see that there is a halfling-sized individual that is on its back. But they seem to be dressed for the cold. Their skin is a little bit grayer and they have more of a wilder look in their eye as it is making its way towards you. And this dragon is going to then come up to the side of the cart uh, and with one claw is going to hit against its side. Caleb. Uh, it had to make a wisdom save 14 because once it gets within 60 feet, I was going to cast command okay. and it's leave. Good. It got an 18. Cool. Okay, as it is getting within 30 feet. I believe there was Boy. a... Uh, I believe that there was a, a bonus action that Corey would have liked to do. Yeah, I'm going to try and face step on to the boyo. Okay. On, onto that dragon's back. Make an Get athletics check. Get up on the check. dragon's back. A what check? An athletics check as you go to teleport on. Because okay. as you teleport on, it is not exactly like you just teleport in a grabbing motion. Especially given the fact that you only have one arm. Mm -hmm. Makes things a little bit difficult to hang on. All right. Come on, dice. Don't fail me now. Oh. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. God damn. I... <laughs> Rolling hot. I, All right, so are you, you are currently in raven form. Yes, so um, that would cause a, uh, some, I would suck out some, some, some hit points, I believe. <laughs> okay. That's, that's what it does, right? Out of, um, yes. No, they need to make a, a save of some sort. Give me a sec. Oh, God. I'm having a hard time tonight, guys, with the, uh, with the old navigation. Okay. Uh, holiday form, moon form. Damn it, my rain fo raven form is up here. Uh, under descriptions. I don't Maybe. believe that there is a save for the raven form. Oh, okay. It is just your charisma modifier that gets taken from the creature and then given to you. Okay. Are you choosing cool. the rider or are you choosing the dragon? Choosing the dragon. Okay. Sounds good. 
Uh, and once you are on the back of this creature and you absorb some of its HP, you end up getting, I believe your charisma modifier is four. Mm-hmm. Yes, so mm-hmm. you end up getting, uh, or no, your charisma is 16, so you mm-hmm. get three. Yeah, three. Sorry. That <gasps> is all right. So you end up getting three temporary HP, and now that you are on its back and holding on to one of its spines, you notice that it doesn't have scales. It seems to be a large white form, but there does not seem to be any scales on this creature itself. Interesting. Okay. And this creature that is its rider looks back at you and just... And he seems to be just like yelling at you in this unintelligible language. Interesting. Okay. You're not I sure... don't know what you're saying! <laughs> Do I understand this language? Uh, you do make a perception check. Okay. Uh, perception is a 16. Okay, with 16, uh, you hear it yelling, Get off, get off, get off, get off, get off! This is my dog! Dog. <laughs> okay. And that is what you hear as this dragon form uh, ends up bringing a claw up against the back of the cart with a smash. Uh, It does enough to hit the cart. It looks like it is aiming for the wheel. So that is going to be for a total of 14 points of slashing damage. And this back wheel ends up kind of cracking and breaking against it uh and your cart ends up looking like it is no longer going to be mobile at this point arjan you are once again rocked inside of the cart hearing all of the commotion from outside this dragon then uh extends its jaws out and is going to reach down and try and bite out towards you calum as it does not like the fact that you just told its proud form what to try and do. And that is... You, y'all are lucky, because the Ak Ink dice is a one on the symbol, so it does Thanks. not. it is not God. able to do the thing. However, it does get its third attack with its second claw, and it is going to bring that against you, Gwen, uh, as you had tried to... As you threw the fucking sun at it for at least a hot minute. And it is going to get a 16 to hit. 16 hits. Fuck me up, fam. That is a 9 for piercing damage. And then you are also going to be taking 7 points of cold damage. All right. One is bloodied. Next up, Arjun. What is this creature? Uh, that you can see. Mm-hmm. Make a survival check. Or is this part of, like, your blood hunter bullshit? You just know what certain things are. Uh, if it's not Fae Fiend or Undead, I would not get advantage on a roll to recall information It about is not Fae Fiend or Undead. Okay. Survival? Yes. Okay. 16. Plus 2. 18. Looking at this creature, and this is the the dragon, uh, it looks very much like a dragon, but you notice that there are inconsistencies with it. Uh, again, there are no scales looking at it. It doesn't look like it has a gullet necessarily where like it could try and eat or swallow or rip and tear it looks like it doesn't actually have a need for food it looks like it it looks like if anything it is made out of one solid substance okay so this is what i want to do bonus action light my claws that's yeah cool 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 that's eight points of damage Shit, that was my bonus action. I can't take two bonus actions. No. <laughs> Alright, so scratch that. Bonus action, I want to like my crossbow. Okay. 
Uh, no, no, the claws are fine. The claws are fine. Uh, and I need this uh, uh, th this this writer to make a wisdom save with which he will roll a five because blood die. Okay. Sounds good. And yeah, he has a negative three to his wisdom, so he got a two. Okay. And, 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 and. I'm casting Mind Spike. So I'm giving him an Albus level migraine. Nice. Uh... The spell save. I also always know the target's location until the spell ends while we are on the same plane of existence. He takes 16 points of psychic damage. And he just starts shrieking out in more gibberish. And Gwen, what you hear is the pigeons, the pigeons, the pigeons, the pigeons, the pigeons! And he cannot be hidden from me. I know where he is. I know where you at. That's it. Okay, sounds good. Gwen, it is your turn. Uh, Gwen's gonna shout up in Halfling, Dude, what the fuck? What are you doing? What the fuck is that? Where are you from? Okay. <laughs> and she good. will ready in action if it comes close again. Okay, sounds Wait. good. And as a bonus action, she'll summon the... It's an Is action the, to summon something. It's torture. an action. Okay, yeah. yeah. She'll she'll just grab her uh, the run tax and ready herself, but she's just very confused about what the fuck is going on right now. Okay. That's not a dragon. You're lying to yourself. <clears throat> okay. Sounds good. Next up is the rider, and Cora, you are on the back uh, of this creature. Uh, and the rider is just shrieking out uh, and is going to look back towards you uh, and is going to, again, just be speaking gibberish as this dragon is kind of flying by. And you see that uh, they spit in their hands and then just begin rubbing it together. And as they are rubbing it, you see that there is little trails of steam that begin shooting off and he is going to attempt to cast burning hands towards you. How close am I? Uh, you are 10 feet away. Great. <laughs> cool. Um, do I have to roll for something? Yes. Burning Hands dex. is a dexterity save. Oh, boy. That, oh, what the fuck? Is it's it another, another 20. It's another blamp? I'm scared, guys. All your attack rolls are going to be ones. I know. <laughs> okay. And that is 11 points of fire damage, and then you half that. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. And as Nothing on it the is, outside. Nothing on the inside. as this creature is casting, uh, you notice that the spike that you are holding onto actually begins to melt in your hands. Interesting. And it seems to just be kind of depleting itself. Hmm. So then. And the rest of you see that there is just this bout of fire that shoots off of the back of this dragon uh, and seems to engulf Cory. Calum, it is your turn. Um, Calum puts a hand on Gwen. Heal at fourth level. She gets 27 back. Uh, oh, no, wait, 20, 30 back because I forgot to add wisdom. And a something shifts from underneath of the the furs, and something black just jets out and flies. And we forgot about Moon in this entire time, guys. I have a familiar. Yeah. Yeah. When you were describing that, made me very concerned. I was all like, "Oh God, what's happening now?" <laughs> it's my surface to air missile. Let's go. Um. Yeah. He's going to try and fly up and over to Corey. This dragon's probably faster, so he'll Yeah. Leave. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's it. Sounds good. So, next up, Corey, you're on the back of this dragon. 
There is a gibbering man yelling at you, casting spells wildly. What would you like mm -hmm. to do? Mm -hmm. I can cast a few spells myself. Um, or, or can I? Do I need to have a free hand in order to cast spells? Yes. And the fit has Ooh. a semantic component. If it just has verbal, then all you need is your voice. Ooh, interesting. Okay, let me just double check something. Uh, oh, it's all three. Um, hmm. So it's a free action to sheath and unsheath, right? How how cheesy is this? Would it, would it be possible to sheath, cast a spell, and then unsheath? It would have to remain sheathed. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just going to try and get closer to this guy. Okay. Make an athletics check. Or uh, actually, this is acrobatics. As this dragon is flying, you have one arm and you are trying to climb closer towards this figure. Walk on top of the snow. Um, Tyler, confirm this for me. Womp, 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 These are some really nervousy womps. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely scared. Okay, What's you managed it to 20? do so. No, it is. It is. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, someone keep count. <laughs> Excellent. Help. I don't need to. You you seem to get it. You're doing well. Okay, so yeah, you managed to climb up to this bro. Yeah. Sword in hand, because you're nat 20. It was really no problem. Like, Corey, you walk on top of the snow. This is fine. I walk on top of the snow. I'm going to attack him. This is a different dice. I don't trust it. Um, you're you're going to fuck me eventually, aren't you? Um, yeah, I'm going to attack him with my sword. Okay. Um, Non-lethally, because uh, this guy seems to be having a, a case of the cuckoo. Um, all right, that seems a little better. Okay. Um, how's about a 10? Uh, a 10 does not hit. Cool. Second attack. Okay. All right, how about a 26? 26 totally hits. Okay. Um, I will second level smite this boy. Um, I'm also going to do my sword damage so uh he's not a fiend or undead nope cool here it comes um that's gonna be 11 slashing damage and ooh, that's oh that's not a d8 hold on i rolled a d6 Woof. okay oh oh <laughs> all right <laughs> karma's coming back for me uh that's three radiant damage okay he's still kicking <laughs> That's the lowest I could possibly roll on all of my smite dice. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Um, I'm going to try and snuggle up next to him and be real close. All right. He does not like the fact that you are this close, but at the same time, he seems to actually be giggling uh, as you strike out against him. Just <laughs> as your sword comes into him, he just seems to be cackling at you. And at this point, the dragon then rears down and lands on the ground, facing the lot of you that are still at the cart. And it is going to rear back, cock its head, and then breathe out a large cone of cold breath. So, Gwen, Calum, Arjan, I need all three of you to make constitution saving throws. Corey, I would like for you to roll for Rumble Thunder. And Cybra is inside of the cart, so she fine. It's a 10 on the die for Rumble. Okay. 18 Sounds for me. Good. 22 for me. So the One. 18 and the 22 are fine. <gasps> Calum, you are going to be taking the full amount uh, from this. Excellent. So that is going to be... Do it is going to be a total of forty three points of cold damage. Cool. Do we take half? The people who succeeded take half. Point one. Yes. It's a, um, It's not a deck save. No, it is a Constitution save. Well, if I survive this, I gotta have to prep find familiar again because Moon and. 
and Cory, you watches from safely on the back of this dragon uh, as it breathes out and just coats your cart, your auroch, and your friends all in a deep pile of snow. Next up. Uh, and then after it lands and breathes, it then lifts off again. Did it come within attack range for me? Uh, it did not come within five feet because its okay. cone is a 30 foot cone. So it was able to do it from kind of farther away. Did the guy hear me when I spoke? If he did, he is not making any kind of mm -hmm. acknowledgement. All right. So then next up is Arjan. How far is the halfling away? And I know exactly where he is. Yes, you know that they are at this point 60 feet away, flying Perfect. up on the back of this dragon in the blizzard. But again, you know his exact location, so. Yep, so the shadows are going to coalesce around Arshan's wings, and he is going to make a running jump and misty step up to the boy. Okay, make a athletics check. I... If, if I know exactly where he is, can I just... Uh... It's more of, like, are you trying to, like, Misty Step, grab him, and then just tumble down to the ground, or are you trying to stabilize yourself on the back of this moving target? Uh, oh, I'm trying to knock him off. Okay, so if you're just trying to knock him off, make a... make an attack roll. <clears throat> Any modifiers? Because I know exactly where he is. Yeah, you can use your dex. Six. Okay. Uh, so I will say that you'll still hit him because again, you know exactly where he is. Uh, but Corey, uh, you are on the back of this drag is dragon as it is flying through the air. All of a sudden, there is just this black streak that shoots in front of you as you watch as Arjan seems to have just potentially flown his way up there you were paying more attention to hanging on than you were watching him run but the rest of you saw him disappear and then reappear and arjan just tackles this guy off of the back of the dragon and the two of them begin tumbling down uh so yes arjan while we're fall falling can i get two attacks on him yes They're 60 feet away, right? I I was 60 feet trying to jump up to him, and now we're coming down. So okay. we're probably a little bit closer than that, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, so one of those is going to be a 13. 13 hits. Okay, cool. So they'll both hit. Five points of slashing damage. Four points of fire damage. Okay. So as you are... And that was with both attacks? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, as you slash... I rolled like shit. Okay, well, that was enough to actually fell our, uh, our gibbering boy. God. Uh, so you are still falling through the air. Calum, did you have a reaction? Yeah, I do. I'm just going to target him and feather fall. Okay. Target Arjun? Yeah, Arjun. No, the dead body. <laughs> it's a... I'll hug, hug <laughs> okay. the dude and no, maneuver I'll, on my back. I'm going to target Arjun. Okay. Yeah, this figure is no longer, uh, no longer gibbering, no longer uh, laughing, Arjun, as your claws sink into him. Uh, he is no longer viable in combat uh as he he dead however there is still this big old dargan in the sky gwen what are you doing as you have just seen arjan teleport up to the back of this dragon and then tumble off with this halfling form uh it's nowhere near me right not within striking distance initially Okay, uh, Gwen is going to get down and 
I have nothing else. So I'm going to um, move away from the cart and uh, try to get it to attack me. Okay. Somehow. Make an intimidation check. Cool. Uh, dirty 20. Okay. Sounds good. She's going to yell at it in halfling, call it all sorts of bad names. All right. Awesome. So that is it for your attempt. Caleb, what would you like to do? You still see that Cory is on the back of this dragon. Cory in the sky, this dragon. He's going to hop off the cart, put a hand to his chest, and cast Cure Wounds on himself. At level three. Um, I rolled all ones. I get six HP back. Yay. Nice. Nice. And uh, he will prep a javelin in his hand. Okay. Sounds good. Next up, Corey. You're on the back of this Dargan. What would you like to do? I am on a Dargan. I'm going to cast Divine Favor, um, which is a bonus action. Um, add a d4 to my attacks, and then I'm going to attack said dragon twice with my squad. Uh huh. All right. Um, does a 25 hit? A 25 totally hits. All right. I presume that a nine does not. A nine does not. No. Okay. So one of these attacks is going to hit, and it's going to have a second level smite on it. Oh, but here comes the damage. All right. So that's going to be um, twelve slashing damage, and. Twenty-five radiant damage. Okay, so that was sorry. What again? Twenty-five 12 radiant. Slashing, Twelve slashing damage and twenty-five radiant damage. Holy shit. Okay. Sounds good. So, it She's is now this creature's sword turn. and like digging it in as uh, far as it can go and dragging it. And as you drag it, there is no blood. It just seems to kind of create this divot along the side of it. Making like steel going through snow, <laughs> making s making freaking like snow snow shoveler. Oh shit! I lived in North Dakota for four years of my goddamn life. I should know what this thing is called. Um, the the big boy on the road, <laughs> snow shovel on a truck, a snow plow. Plow. That's the one. I'm gonna mute myself now. Okay. <laughs> so. This creature then flies up an additional 20 feet and then begins to turn and then focuses its nose straight down towards the ground. Corey, I need you to make a dexterity save in order to hang on to the back of this creature as it begins rocketing towards the earth. Will do. Mm. Mm-hmm. 22. So, with your 22, you manage to hang on as this creature then barrels down towards the direction of the ground and it plummets into the snow and you manage to hang on as chunks of earth and ice end up coming up and striking out against you as it begins to burrow underneath the ground. Ooh, interesting. Okay. So, you are going to be taking half of this, which is good. When did, when did this silly billy get a burrow speed? Oh, I guess in the snow. Makes sense. So, that is going to be 22 total, so you will take 11. Minus 5. Okay. 6. 6 damage. That's fine. It's fine. I think I'm officially bloody. Yeah, I'm bloody now. And it begins burrowing off. 
Uh oh. <laughs> With Corey on it? As long as Corey chooses to stay on it, it is going to continue to burrow. Mm. Gwen, you no longer see this creature. Calum, is you it, do not see Corey. Is it safe to say that I don't know what this thing is? You're pretty, that's pretty safe to say. Cool, 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 cool. I'm gonna roll a wisdom check to see if Corey is smart enough. <sighs> I just lost an arm to this. Hmm. Oh, but I do have a very high wisdom. Okay, yeah. Um, so Corey realizes that this thing is trying to leave. Um, and her first instinct is to hang on to this motherfucker because Corey don't run from a fight and she sure as hell doesn't let anybody else do it. Um, and then she realizes, I just lost a goddamn arm because of this. Um, and she's going to look up. Does she have line of sight to the, to the surface? You are underground. Completely underground. Yes. And the dirt and earth that is being moved behind this creature is then filling back in. Ooh. I, I think that Corey turns around with the thought to, um, to try and misty step her way out of there. And then she realizes that's not an option. She's just going to hold on. Okay. Gwen's going to start digging where this thing went with her ass. <laughs> Okay, Gwen, make an athletics check. Solid. Since I'm raging, at advantage. It's a 14 out of 15, not bad. A uh, dirty 20. Okay. Sounds good. So you are digging as fast as your halfling hands can. Arjan. Um, I would like to investigate this halfling's... Uh possessions to see if there was like anything that was either controlling or creating this creature or both make a perception check Kalen, what are you doing he's helping gwen dig and that one you don't notice anything Cool. Kayla, make a strength check. This will be a disadvantage because y'all tired. I rolled a three and a one. You tired. It's very difficult in order to do so. Gwen literally shovels you out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> but Kayla yes. and Arjan, I would like for you both to make another perception check. Arjan, you will have advantage on this. Okay, natural 20. Natural 20? Excellent. So, Gwen, as you are shoveling away this snow and this earth, Corey, as you are holding on to the back of this dragon as it continues to burrow through the ground with all of the rocks, ice, and everything else buffeting you as it goes. Arjan, you and Calum look up towards the direction of where it came from, and you see that there are three female forms that are standing on a hillside looking down at you, each one with skin a very, very pale blue smiles wide and almost seem too large for their face, showing more gums and very small teeth as they look down, hair white as snow billowing. And then they all turn to each other and you can see that their shoulders are jostling up and down in some form of laughter. And they turn their backs and they begin to walk away. And that is where we are going to call it for tonight's session. So I would like to say, Thank you to everybody who decided to stop on by and join us for this wonderful, magical return to the simple halfling land of Greenreach. What a great time it has been. I have been having a blast. So, uh, RJ, where can we find you? What do you do? Hey, everybody. I'm RJ on the interwebs. We can catch me at rjs 2 on Twitter and Twitch. Hey, by the way, I made affiliate. 
<gasps> my boy. My boy. Uh, so stop by on either to no tomorrow. I'll be playing some Hollow Knight in the morning and. Probably Wednesday evening I'll also be playing some Hollow Knight because I really want to get 100%. It's getting wild. Wings has been popping in. She knows. Uh, you can catch me on tomorrow. Oh, no, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> As we uh, step back into our shoes in Barovia run by Nay Keener, uh, we'll be playing this Speedy, the half, let's say halfling, um, ranger, human, blood hunter, He's a werewolf, and he's lost his goddamn mind. I woo. Now, Ca before... Sorry, continue. Catch me over at Pro Restart's channel with the lovely LB hack -em up while we play through phase. We're using the cipher system. I got a sick metal arm now. Aren't you a also robot? Oh, no, it's like a demified arm now oh, with, like, okay. spikes and shit, and I can make a black blade of light out of it. I got his old arm. Yeah, she got my <laughs> old arm. She got, she got our old, my old arm and then the science arm, so now she has, like, two arms just flailing around. Uh, you can also find me over at Open for Adventure. I'm helping not over there. Yeah. I'll have an after credits thing. It's fine. LB, go. Oh, God. Uh, you can find me everywhere. You can find RJ. Uh, Ophi has acquired uh, an arm that she can't use. Uh, Dr. Agni got her other arm back, so she just currently has one arm. One extra arm, I should say. Um, and that's on Sunday. Uh, Monday and Tuesdays, you can find me here. Wednesdays, uh, this upcoming Wednesday, we are off, but normally I'm, I am on Dammit Berry's channel. Uh, Sunday, we are doing our Monster of the Week game where I'm playing Abby, uh, the expert, so I can use my glasses to tell everyone what's up. And uh, this is Talos, and he uh, is just purring away. And uh, that's it, yeah. Excellent. Oh, oh, what a little motorboat. He's so great. <laughs> Cyber, where can we find you? What do you do? Hi! I'm Cyber. You can find me at Cyberwolf1201 on Twitter, where I ship posts and talk about He froze. What did he talk? What does he talk about? I don't need to know. He talks about lore where he plays video games badly. You're back. Yes. I talk about random stuff, but you can also hear about whenever I go live on twitch.tv slash cyberwolf1201, where I play video games badly and talk about lore. I'm having a horrible time trying to find my way through the world of Link's Awakening uh, right now, but it's cute. It's fun. It's good time. <laughs> the dragon froze me. <laughs> um, all the archives of that go to a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash cyberwolf1201. Uh, you can also find a podcast there that Kyle within and I do called Let's Talk About It, where we get drunk, do parkour, and talk about the games we've been doing. Gen Con episode is up with Endor, and another episode is coming up real soon. Uh, you can also find D&D Beyond Homebrew tutorials. I will, at some point, do more of those whenever I have time. Uh, Keep an eye on the Twitter real soon because something's about to go up on the Patreon that I've been working a year on. But for RPG stuff, besides that one little side Patreon comment, uh, you can find me here on Mondays. Congratulations, you found us. But you can also find me on Thursdays where I play Albus, the Kalashtar Bard. Sorcerer. Abolith, Master of Tools, Lordmonger. That, that, that's a whole bunch of titles. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That's it. DanaeKinner.com. Speaking of which, Danae, where can we find you? What do you do? Hello, everybody. My name is DanaeKeener.com. You can find me here on Mondays playing uh, Coriander the Elegant Paladin and on Tuesdays playing Strahd. Um, oh, you can find, yeah, you can find me at DanaeKeener.com where I do nerdy drawings mostly related to D&D &D and, and a lot of stuff from this channel. 
Um, and until next time, I held on to this dragon while it dug my grave, and now it's time for me to lay in it. That is to say, the grave. Denikiner.com. And I am the indoor adventurer. But if you made it this far, you probably already knew that. Uh, however, did you know we do this show Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or no, Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays mm, at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here at twitch.tv slash indoor adventures. We also put all of our VODs up at youtube.com slash indoor adventures. Or if you're more of an audio cast type person, Search up Indoor Adventures wherever audio casts can be found. Uh, we also have a Patreon set up at patreon.com slash indoor adventures where we have our after show called Nights in the Courtyard where we answer questions not only from you, but also from each other. So if there are any questions that you'd like to either ask me or our players, that is the best way to hear those answers. You can do that by joining in on our Discord. Uh, which the link is found below, either this video, audio cast, what have you. I always make sure to provide it as best I can. Uh, but with that, that is it for our show, except the one little bit that I wanted to show, which is there were two natural 20s for a perception check. Their descriptions can only do so much justice, but... Oh, no, we'll get a picture. Yes. The picture that you show, see... Show us the hags. The picture that you see... Are we sure they're hags? They're bear hags. Oh, they're hags. They're definitely hags. They're bear oh. hags. Are these ladies? They're fucking hags. That's sweet girls. And with that, that is where we will call it for the night. Thank you to these wonderful players for putting up with my bullshit once again. Thank you to this excellent audience for coming out and supporting us and all of Danae's ridiculous 20s. Somebody out there count them. I am oh. just so curious. There were six. There were six. There were including six. The, including the two from the advantage? So oh. a total of seven. So, Eight. Holy butts. I am excited. But with that... Everybody here, have a great rest of your evening, and we will see you all next time. All right, everybody. Bye-bye! Bye-bye!